Welcome to another video. Let's solve another fun math problem. Here we go. We've got x raised to an exponent, and the exponent is actually a quadratic, and we're supposed to find the value of x. Yeah. This is going to be easy or tough, because you can actually look at it and go, I know what the number might be, but I'm not very sure what it is. But there's a secret to solving this. It is you knowing what this expression is and how you can rewrite this expression. Because if you can rewrite this expression, we can find what x is. Let's get into the video. According to the laws of exponents, whenever you have a multiplication of the exponents, you can actually separate them and say that x, let's write this, notice that x raised to power 3x squared is the same thing as x raised to power 3, then raised to power x squared. Or it is the same thing as x raised to power x squared raised to power 3. So whenever you get a problem like this, you have to choose which one works for you. Well, on the right-hand side, I have a number. Therefore, I need to be able to reduce this number. So this is my option in this case. I would take this rather than this, because this one, I can't even use it. So what do I do here? I'm going to use this form and say, let's say, therefore, x to the x squared raised to power 3 equals 216. So if I raise both of them to one third, it means I'm going to have, let's write it again. Um, this is squared um, cubed raised to power one third, just to get rid of this, will be equal to 216 raised to power one third. But I know that 216 is a perfect cube because it is 6 times 6 times 6. Well, it was intended to be like that. So it means this is going to get rid of this. So what we have left is x to the x squared will be equal to the cube root of 16. Or, yeah, that way, let's just say 6. This is going to be 6. Okay, because we could have written this as 6 to the 1 third. I could have written this as 6 to the third, actually. So how do you solve this? Well, can I take the square root of both sides now? The answer is no. Remember that whenever you have um, repeated exponentiation, you do not start from the bottom, you start from the top. So it has to be x squared first. And you cannot get rid of this too at this point. So what you can do, let me quickly explain that. Look at this, 3 raised to power 2 raised to power 3. The way this is, you can take the cube root of both sides to get rid of this. You cannot get rid of this. What you can get rid of is this guy here. But you can't get rid of it because it's raised to power 3. So this is more complicated than what you would normally do if it was just a, a simple exponent. There's a strategy you can adopt. You can make this left-hand side look like the right-hand side, or make the right-hand side look like the left, whatever, however you want to see it. What I can do is, what if, you see, if this guy had its own square, then everything will be fine. So what if we raised everything to power 2? What if I say x to the x squared squared? then I can raise this to power 2 and see what happens. Remember what I did here, what I undid here, and now I'm going to do it. So I'm going to rewrite this as x raised to power. Multiply this by this. You're going to get 2x squared equals, this is going to be 6 squared, which is 36. Now I'm going to separate this and write it as x squared raised to power x squared. 
and I'll write that as 36. I'm almost done. Let's do some substitution. Let y be equal to x squared. If I make y x squared, I can write this expression as y raised to power y is equal to 36. Now I need to just find a number such that when I raise it to itself, my answer is going to be 36. And after getting that number, I can come back to this relationship and take the square root and see what the number is going to be. So what should we do? Well, we've got to solve this. Lambert W function. So, because this is a power tower. Now, let's bring this down first. It's the first step every time. So we take the natural log of both sides. We're going to have y ln of y equals ln of 36. In order to solve this, we have to get our flower e to the flower, right? Yes. So it means we have to write this in terms of e. So if we write this in terms of e, it's going to be e to the natural log of y. That's what y is because e is going to cancel this out, but we still have to multiply by the natural log of y. And that answer is going to be natural log of 36. So here we can write this as ln of y, e to the ln of y equals ln 36. So we know if we take the w of both sides, we're just going to have natural log of y equals the w of ln of 36. Nice. And this we can compute. Okay, but for now, I don't want to compute this. I just want to get my final answer. What will y be? It means that y will be, if we take the e of both sides, e to the w of the natural log of 36. And that's what we've got. Nice, beautiful, no problem. But there's just one problem. What we're looking for is x. We're not looking for y. So here we go. y equals x squared. So this has to be equal to y is equal to x squared, which is e to the w of the natural log of 36. We're going to say that if we take the square root of both sides, we're going to have x will be equal to plus or minus of e to the w of the natural log of 36. And that will be your answer. You plug this in to use any um, calculator that is capable of computing this, and then you will see your answer is about one point plus or minus 1.77 something. Let's just stop there, okay? So we can say this is approximately plus or minus 1.77. There's just a little problem. In another video, I'm going to explain the actual answer is the positive version, not the negative version, because the negative version will give you imaginary numbers. And remember, what we want are just the real numbers. So if you have a negative number raised to a negative number for, for whatever reason, as long as that negative number is not an integer, you will always get imaginary answers. Why does that happen? That is left for the mathematicians to explain. Or maybe in another video I'm going to explain. But for now, know that the only acceptable answer is the positive version. So we're not going to deal with this. So I'm going to remove this also. But I wanted to do this so you can see that it is possible to get two answers, but if you want it to be real, well, let's do plus or minus. We say that plus 1.77, the approximate value is the only real solution. Keep this in mind. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.